Okay, so now we have textured out our terrain, and I mean, it's a pretty impressive texture job, I'm sure you can see here. But the next thing we're going to take a look at is the addition of trees, which has its own tool here inside of our terrain. So we can click on that, or we can hold down the shift key and hit T, and that will take us right to the tree tool. Now, adding trees is very similar to adding textures. The first thing we need to do is bring in a tree that we like to paint down. So I'm going to come down and click on the Edit Trees button, click Add Tree, and then here inside the little Add Tree window, we click on our Load button and pick one of these out. Now, I have a few of these to choose from because I have loaded in the Terrain Assets package, uh, but let's go ahead and grab Scott's Pine Type A, I'll double click, click Add, and now as you can see, I have my first type of tree. Now, the use of the brush is pretty straightforward. If we paint with the left mouse button, we are adding trees. If we hold down shift and paint with the left mouse button, we are removing trees. Now, trees are pretty expensive in terms of calculation. You really kind of need to be careful about how you place these, yeah? Right. There's actually two types of trees that are used in the tree system. The first is polygon-based trees. And these are the trees that are actually made out of a mesh, and they have a 3D shape to them and they are used up close to the camera. At a certain distance away from the camera that's definable in the settings, you will switch over to a billboard of a tree, which is basically just a polygon that has a picture of a tree applied to it that always faces the camera. Now we can demonstrate this. If I turn my tree density setting down, and this is how many trees you're going to get while you paint, I turn that way down until I get one tree and one tree only. And then if I come over into uh, my draw modes and switch over to overdraw. You'll notice that when I'm close to this tree, we see it's made of a whole bunch of polygons and it's got all kinds of little, you know, leaves and things sticking out of it. But as I back off, watch, watch what happens. Click. It turns into a billboard. This is just a single polygon that is a picture of a tree. And then when I get close enough, bump, it changes back. So be aware that that is happening in your scenes. Now, it's generally not extremely obvious, but you can see a little transition take place. So, I mean, it just it depends on whether or not you're really, you know, watching that take place. Now, next, let's take a look at some of the settings while we're painting our trees. Brush size is pretty obvious. It's how big you want, you know, your brush needs to be while you're painting. This can be quite large. So you see we can add a lot of trees that way. Next is tree density. It's exactly what the name says. How dense are these trees going to be while you paint them? If you crank this way up, and let me bring my brush size way down so I don't do anything too scary, uh, we get trees that are so densely dropped that you really couldn't even navigate between them. It's, in fact, it starts to look kind of ridiculous. So the idea is to find just that nice value that allows you to get the trees that you're looking for. Next we have color variation. This is how much of a difference in color is there going to be from one tree to the next? This tends to darken your trees. So to really show it off, I'm going to erase these trees. Let's crank up the tree density to something really high. And then I'll kick up my variation. And you'll notice that some of these trees are really dark. Like they're starting to turn black while others are still green. And that is, that's where your variation is coming in. It's just darkening some of the trees. So I would leave that generally pretty low. Now next we can control our tree height when we paint, as well as the variation in height. Right, now this is basically a multiplier where 100 is the 100% uh, of the original mesh size. And greater than 100, you're increasing that, and less than 100, you're decreasing it from the, uh, the original mesh. Now where this comes into play is when you start getting the billboard sizes. So if you get too close and farther away, this could cause more of a pop as you're transitioning back and forth. And you can really see that on those tall trees. They really kind of slant back. But you can see all three of those sizes there. Now the variation is in a kind of like a, an added random factor. So in this case, our trees can be up to 80% of their original height or as low as 20% because we're starting at 50 and then it's plus minus 30. So as I paint, we do get some variation. Of course, this would be a lot easier to see if we uh, increased our size. Let's just go with 100% for starters. And there you go. And you can see that difference in altitude. Now, tree width is the exact same way. We can set the overall percentage of our tree width 
as well as a variation value. So if I set this to 200, we get some much fatter trees with a 10% variation up to a 30% variation. So again, it's just really all about what you want your trees to look like while you paint them down. Do be careful with this though, because uh, an excessive number of trees will really kick up your draw calls and can really, really slow down your game. Also, your trees added in this manner are only going to be vertex lit. So keep that in mind when you're lighting your levels. And that is going to wrap things up. Oh, you want to throw? Yeah. What um, let's show them what, how they can place a whole bunch of trees really quickly. Oh, I forgot about that. Lee's here to catch me when I forget stuff and I get all excited and I'm going to end the video prematurely. I'm going to erase all of the trees and we'll get way back here. And we'll do this from orbit like so. If you go under your terrain settings, you can choose mass place trees. Now, a warning, this will not do anything until you have a tree added into uh, your tree settings here. So if we set this to 10,000, click place. Unity is going to try to add 10,000 trees to our scene. Now, this would be a little bit hard to navigate, but there are 10,000 trees. Now, that's not particularly useful, but we could undo and pull this down to... I don't know, maybe just a thousand. And that starts to be a lot more useful. Right, and this option will actually uh, randomize between all the trees that you have added. In this case, where we only have one tree, you only see the one type. So if you have multiple types of trees. Well, let's add palm trees for no reason whatsoever. Because palm trees go really well with Scott pine trees, I think. <laughs> and then uh, let's also grab one more. Uh, let's grab the willow tree. And we'll also add the sycamore tree. So there's four different trees that can all be added. And then I'm just going to go up under terrain, choose mass place trees, and 10,000 is a bit much. But let's try 2,000. And you can see that all of our different types of trees are scattered across our terrain quite nicely. And if you've got a large area that you need to cover, this is a very quick way to go ahead and get trees down without having to hand paint them and then you can just come back and remove them. That's right. Just pull out the ones you don't need by shift dragging with your paintbrush so we can carve a swath through the trees that we could move through. So is there anything else you want to throw out there, Lee? No, that's it for this video. All right. So that will wrap things up. Thank you very much for watching.